Let's get started. This is Stefan. He's going to tell you about protect your data objects, not your network connections. Uh, please give him a warm welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation, Frostem, and for the organization. Um, I'm here again, like last year, with Eliza and Marvin, uh, our colleagues. Um, and uh, yeah. A couple of while ago, um, I talked to Eliza. We talked about our IT architecture, so we wanted to explore a little bit, little bit about our business capabilities. We would, wanted to explore about the impact from any legal uh, things that could be upfront. And we were discussing some cloud strategies. And then suddenly, Eliza interrupted me and, told, and asked me, have you seen Marvin lately? So I just gave him a few things uh, to do. Uh, to increase our efficiency and I asked her what exactly was that uh, and she said well we just wanted to move some of our processes to the cloud so that's very easy uh, you just move that box over there uh, then we wanted to have this digital twin data sensor data because we wanted to improve our product with the data from our production line uh, the third item was that we wanted to have some cloud analytics uh, for our factory to have some predictive maintenance data. And that, last but not least, um, we wanted to receive uh, uh, data from the supply chain and we wanted to actually also give back data to the supply chain. Uh, not speak about software updates, uh, which is another topic. So, um, I was a bit uh, afraid what you all gave to Marvin, and maybe uh, you can answer how long would it take you to apply all those changes? Um, one week? Hands up for one week. I'm glad it works out as in my demo. Uh, one month? Okay, last option, one year. <laughs> it's the only last option. Um, so last week we had the chance to catch up with Marvin and um, uh, Eliza pointed out it's actually important that we would like to have this happening in one week because that's the business agility so that is what in the end defines if your company survives or not um, but uh, and data interactions uh, are the driving factor actually in the future uh, it's, um, it's wrong to, do, to, to take a look at anything different. Um, and a switch to a different service provider should be very easy. And then we asked uh, Marvin, so what do we need to change? Um, and he, he said, okay, so if you look at this picture, then what is clear is that the trust perimeter has changed. So before we were used to define zones where everything was secure, that doesn't exist anymore because uh, our fragmented information and information flows and interactions are far more versatile than they have been until now. Um, so um, a device produces and consumes data at the same time and um, there are different data owners on each device that we, that we are using. So actually you have to be able to do authentication and authorization throughout your whole landscape. Um, the concept behind this, um, that is zero trust. So you define your uh, trust levels for much smaller groups or even for data objects. And by looking at data objects, you're getting a fine, uh, a fine grained um, view of your enterprise. And fine grained view means, let's, uh, last but not least, you can minimize your risk uh, on a better base. Um, those dots on the, on the, uh, on the, yeah, they remind me of uh, when I was a child and when I played Lego. Um, and that's actually true because if you would like to then combine data or push out data, uh, you are actually able um, with zero trust to combine them in that way by just defining access policies. So it's a different um, uh, view on, on your architecture that enables you to um, uh, 
uh, include usage control and to do access policy automation. So you are able to use different access policies to control where your data is flowing in your company. Um, that is actually something that you should avoid. So um, um, security gateway uh, that is not securing anything. Um, uh, but uh, you, can, you can mix your trust efforts or uh, your zero trust efforts uh, with uh, looking at your IT architecture. Um, and then you can create a map. Uh, most probably, most of the information that you need for it are, is already available. It's just spread out and not uh, put together in a, way, in a way that everybody can see it, uh, can have a look at it. There's a second um, concept um, named data networks that we find very interesting. Um, in the old world, we all uh, we were used to uh, the so-called hourglass model. So we are centered everything around our IP connections. And on this IP connection, on this IP address, I know that there is a certain data type or a certain resource. So everything has to go through this IP, uh, and we need to address IPs and so on. Um, um, and this is our abstraction layer. The IP address is our abstraction layer. But for our data-centric world, it's not suitable anymore. Uh, the named data network architecture um, uh, uh, takes into account that 90% of our data is coming from streaming services. Uh, so one sender and multiple receivers. And instead of using the IP, or the, the IP as the abstraction layer, you can also use a name a data chunk, the name, a name, a name of a resource. And that is a little twist, um, but actually it is possible. Um, so it's a new hourglass model. Uh, the IP address is not important anymore. And uh, security becomes a first citizen. Uh, 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 yeah, becomes very important. Um, how can a receiver see what kind of data he would like to have? He has a name, and so he first sent out, uh, sends out an intent to, re to retrieve the data, and then he gets the data from, this, uh, from the publisher. Um, why uh, uh, security is improved? Um, because the sender can always put, the, put uh, a signature around his data. So a receiver can see there are now uh, two or more sender, and he can decide which of them are most trustworthy. Uh, that's one part. Um, another part, which is not so easy, is multi-party encryption, because you could have uh, several receivers. That is something that you will need. And uh, I want to mention that also there are a couple of more projects uh, dealing with new architectures like Coast SIA. And I put a link up here so that you can compare the security architectures of these, different, of these new approaches um, as well. Uh, so that's it from my side. Um, Eliza and Marvin are still happy and they are still in action and uh, they are happy to support you with anything that comes up. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some questions? Anybody? Last chance. <laughs> okay, it's not really the last chance. It probably afterwards you, you can uh, reach out to them and get those questions answered. Thank you.